everyone, Gecko here. I'm at Walk Mill in Cheshire to learn all about combine harvesters. Combine harvesters are one of the most important vehicles used on farms. Loads of the food we eat comes from plants that are grown in fields. All of this wheat needs to be harvested, so it's a good job we've got this incredible combine harvester. This combine harvester is called Daisy. She's got lots of neat parts that make her so useful on the farm. Let's take a look. Just look at these massive caterpillar tracks. They're designed to move the combine harvester through the field even when the ground is very wet and muddy. They're like welly boots for wheels. The front of the combine harvester is made up of different parts which pull the wheat inside. Very sharp blades called teeth act like scissors and cut the wheat at the bottom. I wonder why they're called teeth. <laughs> Do you eat your food like that? When the vehicle is full to the brim with wheat, a tractor with a trailer on the back drives next to the combine. The grain is carried up from the tank and fired out of a side pipe into the trailer. This is Ben and he's a farmer. His job is to drive and operate the combine harvester. And driving the tractor is Heather. She's also a farmer. And look, there's her sheepdog, Gary. Hey, hey, hey boy. Ben and Heather use their radios to talk to each other to make sure the vehicles are in the right place so the trailer can catch all of the falling grain. Look at them all working together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Hi, Heather. Can you please tell us a bit more about the different parts of the wheat? So this is the plant that we've been harvesting. As you can see, it grows in the soil at the bottom. Then we have the straw, which we use to bed animals down. And at the top, we have the head of the plant, which has the grain in it. We use the grain to make bread and cakes and biscuits. Because combine harvesters are so wide and bulky, they're too big to travel on most roads especially the small country roads around these fields. To get from one field to another, Ben and his team need to take the front off the combine and put it on a trailer. Now that we've seen the amazing combine harvester harvesting the wheat, let's head to the mill to see what happens with the wheat grains next. Here we are at Walk Mill which is a flour mill. In here, they grind the wheat grain to make flour, which is then used to bake bread and make lots of other delicious foods like cakes. Check out this mega water wheel. The river pushes against the water wheel, making it spin, which turns the gears inside. Terrific! These gears then spin these special stones so that they can crush the grain into tiny pieces until they become flour. And this is the end result. Like these delicious cakes. Can I, uh, can I please have one now? They smell delicious. to Heather, Ben and everyone at Walk Mill for showing us their incredible combine harvester. Until next time, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. I'm here at the Tarmac Quarry to meet an amazing freight train. Behind me, is the locomotive. This is the part of the train that has the engine inside it. 
and it's where the driver sits. And these are the wagons. Wow! There's loads of them. Look, the locomotive is being connected to that long, long chain of wagons. These parts are called buffers. Buffers slow down the locomotive and the wagons at the last second and stop them crashing into each other. These big hooks are connected to each other. This is called coupling. These pipes connect the air brakes from the locomotive to the wagons. That's so the train can stop. Blue Mechanical, what are you doing in that wagon? Well, OK, I suppose you can't cause any damage in there. Please just stay out of trouble whilst I go and learn how you drive a freight train. This is Matt and he's operations manager here. Let's go and have a sneak peek inside the driver's cab. So Matt, how do you drive a freight train? Right Gecko, thanks for asking. Very, very simply, we have a power throttle here, that makes us go faster. And if we want to stop, we have some braking systems. We have two. One, if we're only a locomotive by ourselves, and the other one if we've got wagons attached. If it goes really wrong, we hit the red button and this stops us immediately. And for any naughty people we see on the track, we sound our horn to let them know we're coming. This freight train works really hard, taking special stone all over the country. This stone is used to build houses, roads and even schools. First, the stone has to be blasted from the ground. Big trucks like excavators and dump trucks work together to move this stone around. The stone is then crushed to make all of the pieces much smaller. But how do they get this stone from the quarry all the way over to the train's wagons? Well, Inside these tunnels are amazing things called conveyor belts. They're a bit like magic moving carpets. They carry the stone all the way up and across to where the train's parked. And the conveyor belt finishes here, just above the wagons. The stone falls out of a chute into the empty wagons. Amazing! When each wagon is full, the driver drives the train forwards, ready for the next empty wagon to be loaded up. And that's it! The wagons are all full, so it's time for the train to start its journey. Oh no! I totally forgot! Blue Mechanical's still in one of the wagons! Sit tight, Blue! We'll catch up with you at the next tarmac depot. The train will now travel through this beautiful countryside for two hours before it arrives in the city, ready to be unloaded and turned into special building material. Freight trains are amazing because they can carry so much stuff. Over 30 houses could be built from all of the stone carried in this one train. More wagons mean less lorries on the road too, because this freight train carries the same amount as 70 lorries. Wow! And here's the train, right on time. This is the Tarmac Cross Green Depot in Leeds. The train drives along the tracks and into this shed called the Rail Offload Shed. This is Phil and he's the Rail Offloader. He can talk to the driver on this walkie-talkie and ask him to stop or go. Once the first set of wagons are in the shed, Phil can empty the stone out. 
Hop out, Blue Mechanical, before the stone disappears. Oof. Phil pulls these levers, and the doors on the bottom of the wagon open. Wow, that was close, Blue. All of the stone slides out of the bottom, a bit like water going down the plug hole in the bath. The stone falls down below onto another conveyor belt, which carries the stone up and into the tarmac plant, where it can be mixed with other ingredients and turned into concrete or asphalt. That's the stuff that's used to build houses, schools, hospitals and roads. The final step is for big trucks to load up and take the material to building sites ready for construction. I've loved learning all about the important job that freight trains do. Thanks very much to all of the team at Tarmac for letting us tag along. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road. Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tire with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons, spring, summer, autumn and winter, to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt, 
where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that. Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. everyone, I'm at a racetrack in Spain to meet some really fast racing cars. These Formula E racing cars are special because they're powered by electricity. This is Robin and this is Sam. They're racing drivers for the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. They're also teammates. Their job is to drive around the racetrack in the fastest time possible and hopefully win the race. Today, the team are testing out their cars before the racing season begins. Testing's like practice and practice makes perfect. But first, we need to put the car together. First, the mechanics cool down the car with dry ice, which is a super cold gas. Then they place the rear wing into position and screw into place. The front nose of the car is attached next. Once the helpful mechanics have put the car together, it's time for the drivers to get ready. Racing drivers wear these big helmets to keep them super safe when out on the track. It connects to a neck guard, which keeps the driver nice and secure. They also wear these really smart overalls, which show their team colours. I guess that means I'm in the Envision Virgin Racing team too! Then the gloves go on to protect their hands. After a quick chat with the team engineer, it's time for the drivers to strap themselves into the car. First, Sam jumps in. Then Robin. 
Both drivers have different helmets, so the team know who's who out on the track. Robin has an orange helmet, and Sam has a white one. Formula E cars have detachable steering wheels. That means they can take them off, so the driver can squeeze into the car, and then put them back on again, ready to race. The mechanics do some last-minute checks on the car. And then it's ready to get out onto the track. The pit crew are all part of the same team, and they check that the track is clear. The driver gives a thumbs up to say he's ready, and the crew give him the go-ahead. Both Sam and Robin leave their garages and drive down to the pit lane. We're almost ready to race. Both cars stop at the end of the pit lane and wait to be told to enter the track. If a car is going past, they can't join the track yet, as that would cause a crash. Ready, set, go! Ready, set, go! This is the bit I've been looking forward to the most. Look how fast these cars can go. In fact, the top speed of a Formula E racing car is 150 miles per hour. That's as fast as the flight dive of a golden eagle. Now the other teams are out on the track. It's time to see who can get the fastest time. This car's misjudged the turn. Whoa, he spun out of control. Can anyone go round this corner correctly? Here's our friend Robin. I hope he doesn't mess it up. Way, he's done it. Well done, Robin. Formula E racing cars are powered by electricity, which means they don't burn any dirty fuel. This is much better for the environment, while still having lots of fun. It also means the cars are a lot quieter than normal race cars. Not only do the drivers have to drive around the track, they always need to be checking their energy levels, car temperature, and they need to be speaking to their engineers, all whilst driving. It's a real team effort from everyone. Look, there's a live map of where everyone is on the racing track. I think we've got the call to go back into the pits. The cars slow down and enter the pit lane. The pit crew come out to greet them. Racing cars don't have a reverse gear so the team have to push the cars back into the garage themselves. Oof, that looks heavy. That's one in. And here's the other. As soon as the car enters the garage, the crew test the temperature of the car. It's a bit like when your mummy or daddy check your forehead when you're not feeling very well. It's a good way to find out how you're feeling. The car seems a little hot, so it's cooled down with these fans. I think Sam might be hot too. Formula E is a real team game, and it's not just the two drivers that do all of the work. There are more than 50 people in the Envision Virgin Racing team. There's lots of different jobs, like engineers, mechanics, or technicians. The crew have the incredibly important job 
of making sure the car is the best it can possibly be. And that means looking after it too. The car's worn all its tyres on the track, burning all that rubber on the baking hot road. So we need a fresh new set. This is the control room, home to the clever technicians and engineers. It's their job to keep a close eye on the car whilst it's on the track and come up with new ways to make the car go even faster. It's with these big headsets that they talk to the drivers when they're out on the racetrack. Here comes Sam now. This is his chance to talk to his team and chat about how the car is performing. They all work together to make the car faster so that they can win lots of races. After this meeting, it's time to make some small changes to the car. And then we're back on the track. Racing cars are super speedy, powered by a battery pack. Electric cars are hard to beat. team will be testing out the cars all day on this track to make sure they are at their best when it comes to race day. I've had a great day here in Valencia with the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. Thanks very much to all the team. I hope you've learnt as much as I have about these clean energy racing cars. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a real Stobart energy lorry. But look! Something's missing! Do you know what it is? Yes! That's it! We're missing the big trailer from the back! Let's hook it on! This is Andy and he's the driver of this lorry. Andy starts the engine by turning this key. He puts the lorry in reverse gear and carefully backs towards the trailer. Back a bit, Andy. Little bit more. There. Andy now has to do a few things to fully connect the trailer. He has to connect the hydraulic pipes and electrical lines. This means everything on the trailer can now be controlled from the cab. Andy then winds the trailer legs up. He turns off the trailer brake and fits the number plate onto the back. It's then back into the cab to test that everything's all attached. Brilliant! That looks a lot more like a lorry now. Andy, what's the best thing about driving a lorry? I really love life on the open road. You get to see a lot of interesting places around the country. Would you uh, like to see my truck? Yes, please. The front part of the lorry is called the cab. And this is where the driver sits. So Gecko, this is my cab, it's got all the usual things that you'd expect and some special surprises too. 
this is a steering wheel it was up and down and every position that you'd want it to go it's really really good just here this switch here that turns all the lights on and this here is the all important horn and I also have a bed in the back it's really really comfy because Andy has to do very long drives his cosy cabin has a comfy bed for him to sleep in at night there's all sorts of other things in here to make sure Andy's comfortable for his long journeys there's some curtains and a reading light Wakey, wakey, Andy! It's time to go out on the road. So before the journey, Andy walks around the lorry doing his safety checks. Wow, there's a lot of wheels to check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Each Stobart lorry is unique and gets given its own name. This lorry is called Demi Nicole. Right, Gecko, we're good to go. Hop in. We're off to pick up some waste wood that would normally go straight in the bin. Stobart Energy pick up this wood in their lorries and turn it into electricity to power homes. It's amazing! Andy presses a button to open the roof sheet of the empty trailer. He then jumps back in the cab where it's safe. This very clever vehicle is called a grab and it's used to load up Andy's trailer. The driver uses the grabber to pick up lots of wood and drop it into the back. To make sure the driver of the grab can see over the top of the trailer, the cab can go up and down. Wow, I've never seen that before. It looks like we're full, so it's time for Andy to put the top back on, hop back in and take this waste wood back to base. Base, Andy opens the back doors. He presses this button to start emptying the trailer. Inside the trailer is an amazing moving floor which moves the wood backwards. It then tips out of the back. Once out, it's then time for another big vehicle to come along and pick up the wood. This is called a loading shovel and it loads the wood into this big machine which chops it into much smaller pieces. These small pieces have now become special wood fuel which can be burned in a power station. This amazing material has come from wood that would normally have been buried underground as rubbish. The lorry is reloaded with the wood fuel and then driven to the special biomass power station. This power station can power 35,000 homes. Andy carefully reverses into the bay and tips the wood fuel off. The wood fuel travels underground, up a conveyor belt and is then burned heating water to produce steam, a bit like a steam train. The steam turns a big turbine or wheel which creates electricity. Thanks very much to Andy and all the team here at Stobart Energy 
for teaching us all about this amazing lorry and how it helps to create electricity. I'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!